Hi, everyone. I wanted to do a quick video today because there's a theme that has been really present for me, and I've been talking about it a little bit on Twitter, but I wanted to just give a little bit more love to it here on the channel, and that is trusting the timing of your life. I feel like it's so important to really practice. I think one of the highest spiritual practices is to trust the timing of your life and to lean into the fact that certain things absolutely cannot happen until other things happen prior and that you are always unfolding and evolving as quickly as you possibly can so long as you maintain your devotion and dedication to that practice and so that the rest of how that plays out and how that looks and what timing you know comes along with your evolution and your rise into yourself is only ever going to be what it is right and so there's a major trust there's a major faith that you have to maintain in your own life and you know i think what happens is that we get in our own way by comparing ourselves to other people or comparing our lives to other lives or our journeys to other journeys and the truth of the matter is no one compares. Simply no one compares. We are our own spiritual being walking this path and in this human existence. And there's no one else who is you. There is no one who has ever been you. And there was no one who will ever be you. That's just a divine law. And so what we have to realize is that the way that our path lives itself out is going to be unique to each one of us. And especially those of us who are adamantly and consciously on the the spiritual mission so to speak who are actively working in our own favor and who are taking accountability and who are mastering ourselves and therefore gifting our lives over to the highest timeline for all of humanity and so however that plays out however that unfolds is so much not up to us you know i think it's very much a matrix thinking to kind of have like five year and 10 year plans because we want to know and we, it feels good to like be able to plot things out. And while I think it's good to hold visions for your life and hold intentions for your life, I think if you plan too far ahead on when you're really deep in your path, you only end up getting in your own way because then it'll unfold how it needs to unfold. And if it doesn't unfold how it needs to unfold according to what you think the plan is, then you're always going to feel disappointment or feel like you failed in some way or whatever else it is when ultimately all you've ever failed is your own expectations because everything else has always been on time. It's always been exactly what it needed to be and exactly the time it could happen and played out in exactly the way that it needed to happen for you to learn the lesson and for you to continue to become who you are. You know, and so much of my life, when I look back, obviously, you know, one of the major things that I've ever gone through is losing my mother. And I realize now, as I've kind of seen how things have unfolded since then, which was um, seven years ago and 14 days, um, how much that needed to happen in order for so many other things that have happened in the past seven years and 14 days for me to become who I am. And while, you know, obviously if I could trade anything on my path, it would be that, that I would just change that one thing, obviously to keep her because she was such an integral part of my, the first, you know, part of my life, obviously. But at the same time, I realize why I realize why, and I realize the timing of why that needed to happen and how things have played out since then and who I have become as a result of losing her and what I've had to kind of go through and endure from that loss and how that's built me and reformulated and reshaped me to become a new version of myself and therefore the person who can now be on this new timeline and achieve new things and accomplish new things from this version of myself as a result of that experience. And so, you know, all that we go through, everything that we go through, even the most hardest of hardships are ultimately just preparing us to be who we're here to be. And, you know, it doesn't mean what we necessarily do for a career, although sometimes it is that. It doesn't necessarily, you know, embody in the way that we think it's going to embody our spiritual mission. We're not, you know, we don't all get to be Jesus. And yet on some level, we are the one who exudes and lives out our spiritual design and our divine mission. And so only you can do that. And only you know what that looks like. And only you can realize, well, actually that... Yeah, it's what I do for work, but it's more of who I am at work. It's more of who I am wherever I am. And so if I maintain myself, if I keep myself as a light worker, so to speak, or a shadow worker, even, you know, whatever part of the duality that you play, whatever role you play in the design, your work then is to maintain that, whether it's what you do for work or where, when you're hanging out with friends or 
in any setting, in any environment, wherever you are and all the time, that's the ultimate work. And so the path then is the uh, most of the time unlearning who you are not because this society teaches us who we're not and tries to mold us into these figurines that were doesn't necessarily uphold our highest divinity. And so there's so much unlearning that has to happen that also happens in real time when you're with friends and you feel these old outdated versions of yourself coming through or especially right with family as one of the highest tests. Can you maintain your new version and reintroduce yourself continuously to the folks who have been with you on the path since the very beginning? beginning and knew the you before you were you. And so there's so much, many factors that play constantly. And I think that because in the society we, you know, crown and champion what you do for work and making so much money and all of these sort of external representations of who we, what we think is cool and what we should be striving towards, but they're so limited in really realizing the true divinity of your real nature. You know, what you do for work is great, but if it's, if it's, just that you do this job, but you bring your divine self to this job and that's the industry that needs you, then that's where you need to be. You know, I was talking to a client yesterday who's out here in Hollywood and very much in the industry and she struggles because she's really deep on her path, but also in the industry and has dedicated a lot of time and effort to being in the industry. And to me, I'm like, you know, I think she, in her mind, she feels like she should be doing something else or something more spiritual because she feels so connected to her spirituality more now than ever. And yet at the same time, you know, to me, it was so clear that she's an infiltrator in a way, you know, and many of us are inf infiltrators. In fact, I definitely felt like that was my role for a very long time. Like I'm going to have just kind of a normal job, so to speak. Um, and did, you know, I was a counselor for a while and um, a virtual assistant. Otherwise I've been in property management. I've, you know, done real estate. I've kind of been in many different avenues and I felt for a long time that it was my role to stay connected to these sort of matrixy, you know, spheres of existing so that I could bring this new texture, this new energy, the new paradigm to the old world. And so there's not a right way to do it, you know, and for me, that's evolved as I've, as I've gone along and more these days, I feel very much kind of in my pocket, obviously teaching and working with clients and, and, you know, doing my work otherwise, but it's taken me a long time to get here and there's not a right way to embody your work. There's only your way. And there will be plenty of us who are kind of infiltrators and sort of matrixy type of jobs and yet maintaining the higher vibrational energy. So we're still collapsing timelines and doing all of this sort of, you know, behind the scene portal work, even as we kind of go through our day-to-day -day normal lives. And so there's, it's never going to look one way. And so you can't compare your timing or your life or your journey or any of it to anybody else. You really can't. You can use people as archetypes and or models of how you feel like you, re the, the energy that you feel like you resonate with and you want to call through and embody. And that's amazing and beautiful. And it's, it's amazing how we can see ourselves in each other. Because all you're doing when you see someone who resonates with you is realizing yourself within them and within what they do. And it helps you kind of uh, fragment expand yourself by witnessing how they move and how they do what they do. And then maybe you, it inspires you to call some more of your pieces forward that mirror what they do. But that's all it can ever be, right? We we, we never want to strive to be someone else, obviously, because that's does a to total disservice to your sovereign, unique mission. And we never want to even put ourselves in a box of it needing to look a certain way because it can only ever look how it looks. And so there's a lot of faith in that. You know, I think the fundamental faith is in your own path and the path being, you know, the revelation of who you really are and what you're really here to do and of your gifts and, and of your uniqueness and everything else, what makes you different and to own that and to carry that with, with every step and with every breath to live from that, that ownership and the accountability over who you actually are and being willing to be that person. Even when you're in groups of people who don't get it at all and you're speaking divine code and they're not, you know, I get laughed at often and sometimes it is in my family and it doesn't, it, it used to bother me a lot. Now it doesn't bother me at all because it, I don't need you to uh, understand because I feel like so much of what I bring and I know many of you will resonate with this is energetic and so even if I can give you all the codes and say all the right words to maybe help you see it some glimpse of a way 
you're still feeling it and receiving it energetically just by being in my presence. And I know that, and I own that, and I've cultivated that as a part of my work. And so that, therefore I know that when I keep my vibe high and when I maintain my brightest light, that whether I'm being laughed at or I'm in a circle of very close friends who totally get it and I could speak every bit of my language in there just in full understanding or and or anywhere else along that spectrum, I'm still in my place. I'm still right on time. I'm still where I need to be. And society will try to rush you and people will try to rush you. And, you know, it'll look like you're a late bloomer if you're, you know, not fully realized by 30 or whatever timing, ridiculous timing people place on things. But there is no timeline except for yours. There is no timeline except for yours. And so I offer you the opportunity and the permission to be on time and to clear out that rushing energy that society wants to just, you know, integrate into your body. That's such a falsehood and to clear out that urgency and that need to always be doing something in that rushing around and just that frazzled kind of fight or flight state to free yourself, baby, from all of that, because it's only ever tricking you from thinking that you're not right on time. And even when you feel away from yourself, right, the journey back is still on time. Like that's what's so amazing is like, no matter how far you even get away from yourself or from your mission or your plan or whatever it is, the snapback is so quick that you still are on time. And whatever you learn as you journey back is still so on time. It's still so perfectly in place that you can't be offbeat. You can't be off time. You can't miss what's meant for you. You really can't in whatever form it takes on, you know, if maybe this thing could have been meant for you because vibrationally that's where you were. And so you, but you didn't hit it now, but when you come back, it'll, you know, transform itself into another version of the same vibrational lesson, pattern, person, whatever it is. So it might come in a different form later on, but it's still the thing that was meant for you. So you have to really, really give yourself that permission, really set down the urgency and the rushing and the compassion caring and the feeling like you're not doing enough because it, it does I, I get it I've really dealt with this so much of my life of feeling like I should be doing more I should be bigger than I am I should be x y and z and that was all in my head and as soon as I just put that down I realize and I look around I'm right on time and I was always only ever on time and I did have to be where I was and I did have to go through what I went through for as long as it took for me to go through those things in order for me to be this version of me that's now still continuously just going forever and more on time than ever, right? Because I, I recognize and I honor that and I honor my time now and I honor my path. So I'm offering this to you to do the same because there's so much freedom and there's so much relief in just realizing that you, baby, are so on time. You are so, so on time and you are right where you need to be and you're doing enough, you know, and you're, whether you're checking all the things off your checklist or not makes no difference at all because the checklist is totally of the mind. Whereas the divine checklist is, requires you to just continue to keep going. And we'll always put the things on your path that you need to maintain your fastest trajectory into the person you've always been. So trust your timing, trust the timing of your life. Let that be a centerpiece of how you move. Um, so you're not rushing and feeling comparison and all of these unnecessary stressors. It's all that ever is, is just an unnecessary stressor because you're right on time. You're right on time. So I'm going to give you that. I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to tell you I love you. And thank you for being on this journey with me. And I'll tap back in with you guys very soon. Much love, everyone.